You are listening to selfdiscoverymedia.com, where illumination and inspiration is but a click away. With so many genre topics for you on everything that you need to know in life, we celebrate and share the people who have taken the journey before you and who are now here to serve you with their wisdom and their knowledge. The next show coming up is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to selfdiscoverymedia.com and our mentors shows. Here are where we shall share with you the mentors that are making a difference in the world. They're making the difference in the lives of others. You've heard the Why Show, and if you haven't, please go back and listen to it because that's why they're doing what they're doing. This show is more about what they're doing and what services they offer um, our beautiful global communities. And today we have Jen and Tom Satterley. He is a Sergeant Major um, in the army. Uh, he went over and served uh, Black Hawk Down. I think you remember that. He has been under fire a great deal of times. And when he got back, he found that the home front wasn't the same as it was when he first left. And uh, a couple of marriages later, he realized that maybe he was part of the problem. He was coming home and kind of directing his life as if he was still on the battlefront. And uh, he realized that he had to change. And along with now, his wife, Jen, who's a very strong, beautiful individual, she's helped him redirect his life. And they have started a wonderful foundation called the All Secure Foundation, where they bring couples together to... Um, to reignite, to reconnect, to, to rediscover themselves, because we're going to be doing a wonderful show with Jen as well. While the men are out there fighting for our liberty, the women are at home on their own battlefront, being both parents and also having to be strong for their children, strong for themselves, and never knowing if they're going to get that phone call or knock at the door. And so they're under their own stress. And so those two stresses come to meet and how do they get to know each other all over again? So let's find out all about their wonderful foundation. But first and foremost, welcome to the show, Jen and Tom. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's an honor you. to be here. Um, you, you know, your, your show was so warming, Tom. You know, your honesty, uh, the way you laid it out there, where you took ownership. But again, you also understood what was lacking in your life for when you came home because there was nothing there to help you readjust into not being on the battlefront and, and looking at home life and, um, and letting go and that reconnection and you know um, having gone through a couple of wives which you openly uh, admitted to you realize what you were doing wrong so now with Jen the strong woman on your side here, starting this organization where you are there for couples. Is this how it all came about, the understanding the need for that reconnection? Yes, yeah. it did, actually. So um, I worked briefly in special operations alongside of Tom. Um, I did a film and photography um, company that we had, and so I would embed alongside Navy SEALs or Green Berets and got to know the guys pretty well over the three years that I was working alongside of them. And really um, helping Tom with his PTS at this time and, and helping him look for different modalities of healing and treatments. Some of the guys started noticing that Tom was getting better and better the more iterations that we were doing in training. And so I just started asking, where do you guys feel like you need the most help? And nine times out of 10, it was at home. Mm -hmm. So we knew we, we had to tackle the home front right yeah a different battle altogether isn't it which it shouldn't it be a battle i mean this is where you're meant to go home to the open arms and the love and the harmony and the tranquility but that is not the way it is is it no uh no. <laughs> it was uh an adventure to say the least it was she was she shows daily and she showed me then how strong she could actually be but how easy it is to help people and the changes were so drastic that that's what brought other people to talk to her about mm -hmm. me. You know, they wouldn't talk to me about what was going on. They would talk to her about, well, he's lost a lot of weight. He's not a jerk anymore. What's going on? I mean, <laughs> I don't know who that guy is, you know? And so she would talk to them about it and they would realize, wow, I do the same stuff. You know, I do the same things at home. And uh, mm -hmm. maybe it was just worse on me at the time. I don't know. But, uh, you know, if, when you're a leader, people look up to you and they think, well, that's, that's, got what's all the supposed, that's what's supposed to happen, but he's got it under control. 
And then I talked to other people that have been under me that, uh, that befriended Jen. And they're like, well, when I met Tom, I thought that all leaders must have PTSD and be crazy from combat because they were uptight mm -hmm. and, and hardcore. And they didn't really want that in their lives. They just, right. uh, they assume that that's what happens. And apparently it, it is what happens to mm -hmm. you. <laughs> well, I mean, you're in that mode all time. You know, you've got the responsibility of, of who's with you. Um, you. You want to take as less lives as you possibly can. You want to get everybody home safe. And, you know, you're fighting for the liberty, but in, you know, it's, it's, you know, the freedom for everyone. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you are on point all the time, aren't you? You're there alert every second. And how do you switch that off? How do you take the luxury of a breath and recenter yourself? Because everything about you is alert, alert, alert. And at some point, that's got to give. Because, you know, that's how jerkism happens, right? I become the jerk because I'm alert all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And you get good at it. Yeah. I, mean, yes. I was pretty good at being a jerk. Oh, yeah. You still have your moments, dear. <laughs> but you saw something inside that you yes. knew that that was a, a protective facade and part Absolutely. of the post-traumatic stress that was also presenting, I'm okay, I'm tough, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And it was very common um, mm -hmm. for these warriors not to talk. And, you know, that goes back to World War II, really, when they were told, go home, go about your life, the best thing you can do is forget about it. When, you know, that's not the reality of post-traumatic stress. That's not the reality of trauma. No matter where you got it from, a battlefield or, you know, a severe car accident or, or you know, childhood trauma, which is where I came from. Mm -hmm. So I joked with Tom that my PTS was attracted to his PTS. <laughs> but there's something in that comfort of mm -hmm. discomfort mm -hmm. and finding a familiarity with it. And so it was totally normalized in the culture um, to, to treat spouses like they're a soldier. Mm -hmm. And, you know, part of the things when I started dating Tom and in and, and the first years we were married, I would tell him all the time, I'm not your soldier. You know, you mm -hmm. can't talk to me that way. But which, which came across well for me. I turned into a <laughs> sergeant after that. It's like, you're not my soldier, but we need to get things done right. We need to get done now. And I have the best way to do it. We're going to move out you know, with this plan. She's like, I don't know what you're saying. And I'm not going to do any of that. Mm. And I'm like, I don't understand what's wrong. <laughs> yeah. Very hard to let go of the, the boss hat, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. you're used to being in command. And now you have somebody else commanding you. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and what, what happens so commonly is that, um, you know, the guys or gals, whoever's going into combat deploys, um, when they're gone for those months, the other spouse is taking control of the yes. home, taking control yes. of the children. They've got a system and routine in place, and then it's disrupted. Mm -hmm. And really, one of the things that sort of, I, I'm a veteran wife, so I wasn't with Tom during active duty time. Um, the, the wives that I work with and, and the spouses who, who are still engaged in active duty talk about it's easier when they're gone because mm -hmm. we've got this system in place. He comes mm -hmm. home, he's disruptive. He, he's forgotten that it's been four months mm -hmm. and that life has moved on. And so that's a really tricky mind game as well is to leave your family for four, six months a year and you come back and, and life has changed and it's different. And so that's perceived as chaos. Yeah. Our biggest, our biggest well. goal coming home is to bring normalcy home. And we bring the exact opposite. Well, you didn't know what normalcy was anymore. Right. No. And you we, know. We, it's like the day you left. However, I have all these great ideas on how to make things run better. <laughs> and you try to impress and force that upon the family to, to make things normal and happy. And I'm home and I'm here to help. And, and it's like you just disrupt the whole yeah. household process. For Would sure. you say that there's also a part of it of, and, and as you know, but working with trauma or post-traumatic stress or anything like that, there, it, it requires time and a process to, you know, recognize where the trauma is coming from, to understand the effect that it's had on the psyche, on the body, uh, on your health. And in some ways, maybe a little bit of fear that if I go down there, and let it go and relax and, and just um, deal with it. I won't be able to go back up to the front. Absolutely. Yeah, it became my identity. Mm. Um, For sure. And I didn't want to let go of my identity because it made me who I was, I thought. Mm -hmm. In fact, we had a friend that said, and, and it really, 
being an outsider, being a civilian, and then embedding in this very intense war, warrior culture, I was coming at it with completely fresh eyes. These guys had been in 20 years, mm -hmm. um, you know, at, at Tom's level. And some of the guys I'd been working with, you know, had been in for 10 and, you know, they had forgotten, but, you know, I, I, we were on a mission and one of the guys said, well, hate and anger gets me through. And I just looked at him like, what? You know, but that had become so much of his identity yes. was to associate with, I can be powerful. I can be in control. I've got this as long as I can bring the anger and I can bring, you know, the hatred I feel I can, um, I can get through anything by using those emotions, but and that's Those are coming, very destructive emotions. That's coming from a person and people who have multiple back surgeries or issues with their body. They've been blown up or shot and they're in pain. And now we're working long hours doing training and they want to quit because it's horrible. Mm -hmm. and they no longer want to do it, but we never quit. So it's right. hate and anger gets you through. So everybody gets aggressive and angry with each other. And we eat out of gas stations and eat, you know, six foot long hot dogs with all the Sleep chili sauce hours and the gas night. station will provide it. <laughs> And all the sushi you can get out of the gas station. And then you go to Target and you eat all night. And then you, you just, you're either smoking or you're, or you're uh, drinking, in, drinking, drinking energy drinks. And people would bring um, alcohol, like uh, wine or something to Target during the downtime. So people standing around and start drinking it. And, and it's like, you know, you have to step over and say, we can't be doing this. I, right. The fact that you think it's normalized is yeah. scary. Um, actually, I think Jen brought that up to me. Yeah, I'm like, um... and I had to go over and say, something. I'm like, oh, they're just taking a break. She's like, well, <coughs> wine, and you're on target. And what if something happens? It's you. And I'm like, oh, there's a leadership responsibility here. I'm dropping the ball on. Huh? So, <laughs> right. You know, you, you start to clean up, but people think hate and anger, which are the tools in combat required, you know, get you through everything. And I'm sure he took it home. Years later, we found out he was on every drug on the planet, coping with things that we mm. didn't even know at the time. And, and one day he reached out and said, I need help. I, 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 and told us the story and, um, the full on story of every drug on the planet. I was like, Whoa, I've been working with you for years. And you mm. can't even tell. We used to call him, uh, nicknames cause he would sweat so much, but we just thought it was him, you know, and, and yeah. hiding that while working. And then, Oh, by the way, I'm cheating on my wife while she was having her breast removed from cancer. Um, and now she found out about it. So my life's over. And then, then we reach up for help. And so we got him help right away. And he is uh, one of our biggest, we call him the pit bull now. We send mm -hmm. people to him and he's on it. He's uh, two years clean and sober and healthy now. Right. And uh, getting his life back. So rock, rock bottom. Well, and, as I uh, pointed out in our show before, the cosmic two by four, you know, sometimes you need that to completely flatten you and go, I've got nowhere further down other than underneath the earth. You know, this, I could use the same strength and courage I use on the battlefront, on my home front to rise up again. But you can't help those until they're unwilling to help themselves. As I said, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. But leave it at the water long enough and it will realize it's thirsty. So we do, we do that as well. People love that. send us numbers. Can you call someone so they seem to need help? Like every time we call somebody, we get yelled at, screamed at, or they mm -hmm. turn off. They have to reach out to us. Here's our number. Yes. Have them reach out to us. Take the step. If they don't take the step, they're going to turn us away. Right. And the thing is, you're seeding. You know, the thing is letting them know that the help is there. there are, those are the seeds that you've planted. And at some point, this is enough. Where's that number? You know, at least they know there's a number to call. And I think for an awful lot of people, you know, and, and you see this with some that come home, you know, the gun has been the extension of their anger, their frustration, their pain. And they no longer have that gun and shooting it at anything to release it. So what are they going to do to release? They go to drugs or they go to violence uh, and because they don't have that outlet, you know, of, of how to release all that pain and anger. Because as I said, once you let go of that, I would imagine that it was very hard for you to ever go back to the home front and step in, you know, back to the battlefront and, and step into that same zone you, you were because there's a danger you know, that you would not be able to get back up there on alert anymore. So I think sometimes it's when, when you deal with things like that, there is no going back because you, you can't go back, you know, back and forth from between the two modes. Yeah, there, you, you get stuck. You get stuck in one side. Um, mm -hmm. Guys, when they turn in their weapons and go home, they, they feel insecure. They mm -hmm. feel like they need that weapon 
<clears throat> they've had, they've carried it with them for four months, 18 months, depending on how long they were for deployed. 20 years. Yes. Always, right. <laughs> always had that weapon and now turn it in and go home. And a lot of these guys go and buy guns and I love yeah. guns. And how many guns do you have, Tom? I'm like, I don't know, one, maybe two, you know, well, I got six and seven. Why don't you collect guns? I said, I can only shoot one at a time. So mm-hmm. it's just for house safety. And again, I live in that possibility mode now, not probability of right. being attacked and murdered. And, you know, so I don't need six weapons and, and, anti-tank mines out in the front yard anymore so (laughs) but it's difficult to be able to toggle so and really it's not a willpower thing like can i turn it off or can i not turn it off it's the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems yes flipping that switch and and the issue is they're they want to be able to turn it off and they feel weak or they feel um vulnerable get vulnerable because they're like, I don't know why I'm so angry. I don't know why I'm so aggressive. I don't know why I react the way I do. And when we break down, this is a biological response. Mm. This is a protective measure that your brain and your body is being thrown into. It's not your fault. This is not a matter of willpower. This is a matter of taking um, the healing modalities uh, that we've outlined. And certainly everyone should advocate for their, be an advocate for their health. Um, and I know certainly when Tom wasn't able to, I, I stepped in in that role and said, okay, we're going to go do this. Okay, we're going to go do this next. Um, never giving up and always trying because the reality of combat, combat complex PTS is about a 10-year recovery yeah. for most. That's when we realized, the, obviously didn't realize the strength of the spouse, but we realized the strength of the spouse in this process to help when they can't help themselves. And, and when I started out at what I thought was a bottom and then reached bottom even deeper, you know, she helped pull me out and she's there when I can help myself. She's just standing there next to me. When I can't help myself, she's there to help me. And so, you know, understanding all the research she had done, she understood the triggers and what she was looking at most of the time. And if not, she'd get back on it and start figuring it out again and would try something different. So, so we realized the importance of including the spouse in the treatment and we're well, not treatment, but in the process of, of helping of healing. therapy and healing mm-hmm. yeah. as a bigger foundation to help you when you, you know, you, you stumble, we all stumble. So yeah. if you have somebody else here to help you along the way, then it's you twice, twice a chance to improve. I mean, how many times do you hear people who are going through a divorce or separation say they're not the same person I married. And, you know, most certainly true of a combat person, you had to become a different person out there on the battlefield. It was literally life and death. Um, And you bring that person back. And really what it is, is reprogramming, isn't it? It's letting your defenses know you're safe now. You're on the home front. There isn't somebody around the corner, you know, ready to take you out. Um, We hope. (laughs) We do live live in a very violent (laughs) society. But, you know, it's, it's not been on the defense all the time and learning to that there are some beautiful things in life and there's life worth living because I, you know, I know for an awful lot of vets that I've interviewed, you know, all, all of them went through the, is life worth living? You know, I'm not sure I want to. And, you know, I think anybody who goes through a trauma at some point you ask that question and, you know, this is the discovery of our strength and our courage. And, uh, and a lot of it, our wonderment is the more, surely this is not it surely life could be better so again it's that horse to water when you're ready to be helped you can be helped but until you're ready you can't be but people want to come home to their spouse the spouse wants the husband again or the wife again depending who's gone out there in service and they want that family to be back to the beautiful apple pie family but it does require work skills on tools on both sides so the fact that you're helping couples reunite and understand each other understanding the triggers what to do when those triggers come about you know whoever's come home understanding the home front and what's been going on there and that you just can't come in and sergeant major everywhere (laughs) (laughs) it doesn't work it doesn't work that will build animosity right and resentment when are you going back (laughs) sometimes it works on the animals in the house but that's it yeah I mean, they, maybe even, even that not to a point yes. no, they, even they, no. they just run away now so. and, yes. and you're right to your point where um you know divorced couples even in civilian society say you know we got married at 25 i'm 45 
I'm not the same person. You're right. not the same person. Mm -hmm. We have different goals. We're going in different directions. Yeah. And, um, I hear that all the time from the spouses. This isn't the guy that I married. And I said, he'll never be You're right. the, you know, rosy cheeked boy from Indiana at 19 again, yeah. um, but I'm not the same woman exactly. I was at 20 either. Yeah, it's the same uh, for non-veterans. It's the same for anybody. Yes. Um, if you grow apart and you don't stay connected, you have to start to get to know each other again. And, that's, and the farther apart you are and the longer that process is, the harder it is to overcome that separation. It's yeah. like two people fighting and then you don't call each other for a day and you're like, well, I'll call tomorrow, I'll text and then you don't. And it gets to a week, then a month. And then some point is the opponent no return where it's a little too weird now to even attempt yeah. that. Or, or act like nothing ever happened. Yeah. And you don't solve anything. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the, the point is as human beings, we're meant to evolve. Mm -hmm. You know, we are meant to be in that self discovery of who we are. You know, we say, discover our beautiful instrument, learn to play it and bring it to our orchestra of life. And sometimes, um, as couples in, in various stages of our life, we're going to go through individual growth, individual right. self-discovery. But that doesn't mean you're moving on without me. No, I'm just in a self-discovery. Discover me as I discover myself. Right? Absolutely. You know, don't sever the connection. Support the person going through that discovery. Absolutely. Yeah, and do it with them. Get to the, yes. you know, help them along the way, join them. Um, yeah, it may not be your time. And maybe something comes up yes. for you along the line, and then that person's going to be supportive of you. Do not expect that you're always going to be that perfect seesaw because that's rigid. It's got to right. constantly be the, the give and the take, the up and the down. What you don't want, though, is the up highs and lows. Okay. You're right. Yeah. You want to keep it in a nice momentum and go with the flow because if you respect your spouse enough, to let them explore, right? Mm -hmm. To let them explore uh, opportunities, possibilities in their life. And you see them succeed. Don't you have joy in your heart Absolutely. for that success? Doesn't that then come back and, and blanket the entire family? Sadly, that's one thing she taught me, Jen taught me was, you know, oh, I love, I love you, I love you, I love you, yeah, but respect. Right. Do you respect me? Love totally doesn't different. Carry you. I love my no. ex-wives too, you know, but I didn't respect yeah. Them because obviously of what I did in my life and, you know, I, I just respected me and my job and getting out. I was like, what I love you. And what's the problem with this? And she's like, it's, it's called respect. I, I like that with the love. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh wow. I didn't even realize that I wasn't bringing respect. Right. Um, yeah. We you know, had a my, little my Tina Turner. Would, well, yeah. would be there. <laughs> <laughs> what's love got to do oh, with it? Honey? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So my words were there, but my actions weren't. And, that, and that, I, I, that I is a, a huge a point. Mm -hmm. I catch a lot of people that, but I love my wife and I don't want to lose her, but I've cheated on her six times and she's caught me six times. And I go, do you, do you really love your wife? You know, you, all the time people are doing the same thing. I go, your words aren't matching your actions. Yes. So people, yeah. you know, people. Or where's your you priority? Feel and what you really yeah. do today. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, <sighs> You, you, marriages doesn't matter whether you're a warrior or not uh, are going to have challenges mm -hmm. you know suddenly there's illness and there's bills or there's laid off or there's this or that you know life is life and it's it's things come up and and you have to deal with them and if you're strong together as a family you can deal with them as a family and you can get through anything together in in that beautiful unity of love respect and support of one another but if the respect isn't there and this is where i think where the danger is uh, i don't know if you've seen the marriage story um i haven't yet i'm dying to see that no I'm no it's on sorry. netflix it's on netflix so you know I definitely <laughs> you know I've, I've divorced so i you know it did resonate there are things that are said in the heat of the moment in the frustration that can never ever be undone can never be undone. And you want to make sure that you handle that frustration, that you don't get to that point of no return. Because even if you did end up being friends later or whatever the case is, you can never undo those statements. And even if they're understood, they were said in frustration, but there are just some things that are crossed the boundaries. That means there's no point to return now. So we really do have to hold ourselves in check. And I think one of the biggest things first is if you don't have respect for your spouse, how can you have love for your spouse? Because right. How can that love be true? And I, I, we, I talk to people about 
how they handle their relationships based on how I handle ours. And a lot of times it's, I don't have weapons anymore, but I still want to win. So I use the weapons that I have, which is the knowledge that I have on you that I know hurts and cuts the deepest, right. which I will go straight to the deepest, most painful subjects. And then after we're done, I'm like, you know, I was just mad. <laughs> and before it was all the time, all the time, all the time. And now it's like, you know, I'll start to say something like, okay, pull back on that one. I'm more aware of it now. One may slip out and immediately like I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, that was me trying to win. That was the, you know. That was the jerk coming out. Yeah. Yes. That was, that was, that was crawler coming out, not Tom. And, right. uh, and that brings up a good point too. Something that really helped me um, as a veteran spouse of someone with, you know, complex PTS was that, that what we had just talked about, Tom had to be multiple people mm -hmm. um, and we all are multiple people. And the way that our therapist had put it, and it was sort of that light bulb moment. She said, listen, you're different people as well. When you go to church on Sunday, you're a different person than when you're hanging out with your girlfriends on a Friday night happy hour. Right. We all wear different faces. Yes. And that was like a, oh my gosh, now I can help see and understand when his call sign is crawler. When Crawler is in the house, it's not a good thing. And I can identify it quickly and say, okay, he's becoming agitated or aggressive. Um, big part of post-traumatic stress is uh, perfection-driven aggression. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the cup's in the sink or there's a sock on the floor. It's, the brain perceives it as chaos. Mm -hmm. so immediately he goes into his flight or fight response, which in most veterans, it's going to be fight. Right. Um, they're not so much on freeze or um, a flight. Yeah, yeah. That's me to freeze <laughs> and then run. Yes. Um, but oh my now God, I, the guns are coming out. Yes. It yes. makes but it easy. It, it, it makes definitely easy helps us to have that language and that tool of saying, okay, I could see you're agitated. I could see, you know, that things are turning and crawlers coming out. Yep. Your crawler is showing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. not pretty. It's not. And, and you know, there's a respect I have for Crawler and the work that he had to do overseas. But um, he has no but, place here. But he has no place in the house. And yeah. so I'll say something if he's kind of in that mode and he says, I'm going to go upstairs and check the kids' bedrooms. I said, please have Tom go check the bedrooms. Yeah. Crawler does not need to check the bedrooms. And you could just see this immediate realization, awareness. Yeah. You're right. I'm getting a little amped up. I don't need to be amped up. It's a kid's room, you know, and I can hear him actually sometimes talk out loud it's sad that through you that process. It coming on. Yeah. It's like a Homer Simpson when you're watching the cartoon, he's thinking, don't say this, don't say this, don't say this. And he say says donut. it, he's like, don't. Yeah. <laughs> and I every time I tell myself, don't, 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 and I do it. And, and part of that is if, you know, your thoughts become your words, become your actions. Yes. I'm thinking one thing, my brain's hearing another, you know, so now it's, I think I've learned along the way with a lot of research is, is, you know, don't say I won't cheat on you or this or that. You say I'll always be faithful, faithful to yeah. you. You know, you think and talk in the positive. Yes, yes. Well, you know, what you what you water grows. Yes. Yeah. Right. And so it, if you're going to exactly. water those negative, that's the, you know, you, eventually she'll cheat on you because you keep saying that. Right. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. So it is be careful what you say. And, the, you know, this is where a lot of shows I do on take five or take a breath. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, if you say crawler is there, take a breath, you know, and for you, it, breathe. I'm aware crawler. You, you served me well, but you don't belong here. <laughs> Letting you out. <laughs> you yes. Know? And we tell and, people to do that and I do it. And, and they're like, it didn't work. Difference. It didn't work. I tried it and I still got angry. It took me years of yes. trying to get it right once to finally get it right a couple to now I'm getting it right every now and then. Yeah. You, you have to work at it. Persistence. Yeah, yes. you're not going to write it down and you're going to do it the rest of your life. Good job. No. You know, you're all better now. So, well, that's, that's the point, though, isn't it? Is, is that um, a huge part of you was created on the battlefront. And a great deal of that is, is your personality. But you have other personalities that are kinder and more nurturing and more loving that need just as much attention. But that doesn't mean when those triggers come up that you're not going to step into that other mode. And as long as everybody understands, uh oh, why is he triggered? What happened? Why is Crawler showing? You know, and don't say, well, you told me Crawler would never come out again. Well, that's not going to work because you <laughs> don't know what's going, uh, triggering, right? It's understanding right. what was the trigger. And then just to let him know that your trigger's being set, what, what happened? Let's address the trigger. 
right? And right. understand this Absolutely. is still a work in process. Do not think you're going to go away for a happy couples weekend or you're going to do a bit of therapy and everything is going to be kumbaya. It's still going to be a work in process. What you're doing is giving them the skills and the tools and the understanding of how to use different now I'm going to say weapons because you shouldn't have weapons at all in relationship, <laughs> but skills and tools in the relationship to, to create that harmony because you're, we're on the battlefield. It's all about destruction at home. It's all about construction, right? Right. Yes. What are you building together? Absolutely. And tools are everything and awareness yeah. is everything because you can't change something that you're not aware that you're doing. And, you know, we, we talk about muscle memory, and for Tom, you know, he shot his weapon thousands of time. And every day he would go to the shooting range and he would practice and practice and practice. And his team would practice and practice and practice so that when he was on the battlefield, he was just reacting. He yeah. didn't have to think. And so a lot of when they come home, it's just reaction, reaction, reaction. It's muscle memory, the aggression, the violence, the, the way that Get you talk to somebody. Right away, take control of it and yeah. then manage it versus... Yeah watch it unfold because nothing's really going to happen mm -hmm. you know? but we didn't have that opportunity we we had to get control of things manage it take care you know own it and then move it to where we wanted it to go and and we, we that's all we know at home and, and and guys don't understand why do i do this i'm like well think about it you did something ten thousand times you know you're going to walk in and and, and I, we teach it in the in the terms of training mm -hmm. i used to carry my pistol on my hip I could go there in a split second and, and shoot six targets in, in, in under, you know, 2.4 seconds and never miss. And one day I moved my weapon to my chest because I was in charge now and I was doing more climbing and I needed extra space for radios. And I'm no longer really shooting people. I'm just in charge on the target of, of my guys who are, who are in there. And, you know, if I need it, maybe, you know, I'm usually surrounded by those guys. And one day I needed it and I went straight to my hip. Mm -hmm because I had practiced this a couple of times out of my chest holster, but I went straight to my hip under stress and duress. Yeah. Went back to what I knew, the muscle memory. Mm -hmm. And we use that. And I, and I, and I remember that forever now that I trained for five years or 10 years this way. I did it this way for two months. What am I going to go back to? Right. Exactly. So your, your emotions are going to be the same. Your reactions are going to be the same. It's the same so much of it. Oops. Sorry. No, 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 no. But it's the same as if you were an athlete. You know, you're right. training, you're training, you're training. And how are you going to get that training? You know, it's now applying that training to a different, you know, a different modality. And, um, you know, it, eight positives are needed to undo one negative. Right. right? A minimum, a minimum. And as you said, if you've done 10,000 times one thing, you know, how many are you going to have to do to undo or, or reprogram? Because it is all about reprogramming, you know, yeah. the, the brain. We've got to remember, this is the CPU. Right. The mind is the programming. But when you start igniting the soul and the heart and the spirit into the equation and you start living through that, the mind will know what it needs to know when it needs to know it. And it won't go to the violence. Right. right. Because it's come from the heart and the soul and the spirit. So I think if we can teach people to get in touch with that intuition, that gut feeling of not survival, but of, you know, listening to the beautiful wisdom from the universe, let it resonate yeah. with mm -hmm. our heart and truth, let it act out in our spirit, then our minds will be looking for different information to apply to that instead of going immediately to the programming that's been there before. No, yeah. I, I agree completely. And it's, it's something that we talk about all the time with our couples is don't expect this to be an overnight right. process. And, you know, you might be doing great for two months and then slip for a while. That doesn't mean you've slipped and you're going to stay there. Right. It just means it's part of the cycle. And, and I, we find so much despair in that slip. Yeah. And we really are trying to educate people that everyone slips. It doesn't matter what job you've done. If you're a very powerful CEO and you're in charge of, you know, 25,000 people and billions of dollars, you're terrified too every day. Yes. Yes. And, and Different we, battlefront, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll break it down for them in terms of what they understand and know like shooting instructors. Um, they're having trouble, same troubles all the, all the other veterans have with their relationships and they don't understand why it's not happening quick or why it's so difficult. And I tell them, well, when you were teaching shooting, I would always rather have someone who's never shot before. 
They don't have bad habits already ingrained mm. into them. I don't have to break a bad habit of, of anticipation of recoil or whatever. Somebody who's just a sponge and listening and they do exactly what you tell them, those are easy to train. The ones yeah. that come in, I've shot all my life on the farm and I can shoot anything and they have all these, but, but I need help zeroing it because I can't seem to hit the bullseye because they always jerk the trigger down and they don't know they're doing it because it's part of their, right. their, their, their habit now. Their brain is connected to their trigger finger and it's always just this. And you have to trick the brain to break that habit to get them. And within, within 30 minutes, I can have them shooting bullseyes that they've never shot before over and over again by faking that the gun's loaded and watching their hand go down. I go, see, that is muscle memory that you can't even control. And the gun's empty. I'll tell you it's empty. And click. You can't hold the gun down anyway. So, And they, they start to see, oh. It is biological. It is my body. Mm. And I can't really just will it to do something. I have to work on it. And teach right. It you thing. have to work on it. You have to train it. Um, you know, the, there's a simple program of uh, So You Think You Can Dance. And there was a, a judge once with somebody who was a, um, a ballet dancer. And they have to do different, um, you know, modalities of dance. And she was doing hip hop. Well, ballet dancer, everything is about being erect. You know, the spine must always be straight, right. elongated, everything. And in hip hop, it's all about crunching down, right? <laughs> getting down with the groove. And, you know, she was getting some criticism. And the woman said, you have trained 10 years, 15 years to be a ballet dancer. You can't suddenly take that structure, that whole alignment of body, and ask it to do something against its muscle training. And that goes mm -hmm. with anything. If you've done anything long enough, and you've got to switch and to doing something else. It's going to take persistence and training to adapt to a new modality. How many veterans do you know that came home without limbs mm. and then have got yeah. to walk on different legs, right? Mm -hmm. Now, they're not going to be the same as their own legs, but what did they do? They end up on, you know, so you can dance. Um, not so you can dance the uh, celebrity dancing one, right? And they show everybody what they can do with what they've got because they've adjusted to the loss. Right. But they look at, but this is what I have now and this is what I can do with it. So a great deal of it is that mindset, isn't it? Absolutely. I, I comment. You see social media, you'll have people with no legs running on a treadmill really fast. Mm -hmm. He's tied to a rope so he doesn't run off of it. And there's a guy behind him so he doesn't fall. But this, this guy's running or people with one leg or Skiing. a person with no yes. arms and no legs. And he's in a backpack going through an obstacle course with his teammates. Mm -hmm. And and people put, it's a miracle or this or that. And I write persistence. Yes. Training. Yes. You know? He didn't give up. <laughs> no. He retrained to do what he can do with what, he's, what he has now. Never gave up, never or, gave or in, could, just readapted. Could, yeah. Mm -hmm. You could lay there and drink booze and, and feel sorry for yourself. That's an option. And Remember Forrest Gump. That's, yes. what, yeah. <laughs> that's what you'll get good Ten at. Ten and yeah. Yes. You lay there and take pain pills and drink alcohol all day, you'll get really good at it. But what I love about the Lieutenant Dan story too, which is a huge thing that we found, is that he – um, reestablished his purpose. Yes. So we see him Thank turning you. his life around mm -hmm. when he's needed and wanted, and he feels that sense of purpose again. Um, and he has a mission bigger than himself. Now, and see, I think you've so hit on something so big, purpose. Your purpose yeah. out there was to keep, you know, your, your team alive, you know, to, to serve your country, uh, to get back alive. That was your purpose, right? Your purpose now is different. And I think for so many vets that come back, what's my purpose now? Absolutely. You know, I can't go into that job there before. I can't do this. What, what, am I, what, what am I good at now on the home front? What could I do now? Never mind dealing with post-traumatic stress. Never mind dealing in, with the anger and all of that. Uh, or maybe some physical challenges also from battle. It's like, well, what's my purpose now? And I think everybody... I can tell you, everybody I've interviewed here has gone on that self-discovery of what their purpose is and gone through the trials and the tribulations. But when they discover that purpose, that beautiful instrument that they are, then life takes on a totally different meaning. But it just means it's a new adventure, isn't it? It's a new exploration of finding your purpose. And is, yeah, a lot of guys are afraid of it. They are very afraid. I need afraid. to go back. This is all I can do. I go, well, could you have done that five, 10, 15 years ago? No, they taught me how to do it. Okay. So right. you're teachable. Yes. <laughs> so what else do you want to do? If you don't want to continue doing this, you know, you don't have to go be a cop. You don't have to stay in the military 35, 40 years because you're afraid to do anything. You don't have to go do contracting and work with people you've never worked with before in the most 
unimaginable situations possible that, you know, you've never trained with these men before. Now you're going to combat with them because, you know, you get an extra $200 a day doing that. Um, is that what you really want? So, and you know, a lot of people will seek permission <laughs> yeah. um, from us. And especially cause I think a lot of the guys knew I was in the arts before um, I would have people say like, I really want to go back and be a music teacher. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. And they're like, yeah, I don't know what anybody would think of that. It's kind of, I'm like, why do you care? You, they're not living with you every day anymore. Right. You're home with your wife and your children and you need to build that life now. That life you had with your brothers is, is over. It's a memory now. Yeah. Um, and you have to wake up every morning and feel good about what you're doing. And the longer um, you've been in, some guys come in for four years and get out it's not as much of a transition. They yeah. didn't spend as much time doing this, so it's not as long to do, undo or do something else. Yet those seem to be the really miserable ones. Mm. I don't know where to go or what to do. Well, you You're have so to young. learn something. You're yeah. so young. Yeah. You're really not even out of the starting gate yet. You did four years in the Army or wherever. You know, Good job. But you Good training to apply yeah. to anything else in life. Yeah. Right. Take right? that little bit and yeah. put it towards something else and build something bigger. And I was going through it. Big time. Starting this foundation, I had, I never believed, I was like, eh, we're going to fail. This is, this is going to be horrible. People are going to make fun of us or me or, or what are you doing? And I don't really know what I'm talking about. And terrified, mm -hmm. terrified. We just, I just kept plugging along, faking it. Like, uh, we'll be all right. Right. And <laughs> you know, and when you start to do it, it just comes out natural to, to share What's your experiences. It, the, with the fake it till you make it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that my whole life, but this was more terrifying than, than anything I've done But in the it's military. the thing that has saved him the most. And then look at the, the ripple greatest. effect. Right. I, I mean, you know, talking about saving you the most and then having a wonderful ripple effect. Uh, and musicians, um, I've interviewed a few vets who um, always loved music and have gone back into music. But now they're doing the music where they're bringing attention to veterans organizations or veterans funding, and they play at those type of things. So they're still very much involved with the veteran side of things. But what they're doing is, is stepped into their beautiful gift and right. using it in that way. You know, Bobby Henline, I was talking to you about who uh, his hummy blew up and face burnt and lost a part of an arm. He's a comedian. And so with his dog for his post-traumatic stress, he goes around, you know, making fun of everything, running fingers through his non-hair, you know, having a new eyelid put in. You make fun of it all, which then in turn gives permission to people to laugh again. And, yeah. you know, um, others who have written a book and then other people have come back and said, you've told my story or thank you for telling that story. I've understood what my son's gone through. So the thing is, you can still take your experience and you can put it into something else that could be meaningful and serve in a different way, right? You don't have to close the door in it completely. No, we, you don't. We've and, been and working on that because a lot of guys, their identity is to be in the dark, sulking in the shadows. Even, even me in the, well, the work that we do is such, it's such som sobering and somber work that, you know, you start to talk about it. My shoulders slump forward. And it's like, it's a miserable thing to talk about, but we're talking about bringing back the positivity side yeah. of it. And yeah, you have PTSD. Okay. Let's, let's work on getting over it versus I know, sorry. And you're slumping yes. and, and sad kind of guy. Um, I was doing that for so long and we're trying to bring positivity stories into it. Not, not a comedy session on PTSD kind of thing, but, and suicide, but something lightening it up, lightening it up. Right. It up. Yeah. Because nobody, you know, especially for this warrior class wants to feel weak right. or victim. And there's so much victim, you know, some guys who I know for sure have PTS who have been through things like Tom are like, I don't have that. No, I don't, I don't have that. I'm like, tough to have that. I'm like no, oh, of course you don't. Okay. We don't have to call it PTS. You know, we don't have to label it. We don't right. have to call it something that makes just you feel a certain way feeling just, uneasy you know yeah. <laughs> right really what let's it is. just deal with <laughs> the symptoms then let's yeah. talk about the other parts of it but we have a friend who served in delta with tom and um he's in a band he was in a band before he's in a band now and um all of his music he writes about his experiences in war um he writes the veteran experience he gives the money back to veteran organizations and it's just this really beautiful um, healing through music and it's sharing that experience, which is a combined experience that he's made for so many people and really helps um, the community feel engaged. So 
you're right. There's, there's many things you can do. Right. Um, people yeah. who, who become art teachers for trauma, yes. kids with trauma, or, you know, another guy said he wanted to be a, um, a chaplain and, and wanted to go and, and really because of what war had done to his spirituality and the work it took him for years to regain that spirituality. Um, he wanted to help other people, yeah. prison inmates and, mm -hmm. and other people who had trauma to come back to their spirituality. So there's many things you can do with. Yes. And cracking with that it. mentality of how hard I can be for people. Right. It's like, well, write it down, journal. Well, I'm not yeah. going to journal. That's for girls. Oh, okay. Well then, do poetry. Poetry, that's for girls. Okay, <laughs> write a rock song, a metal song <laughs> with what's wrong with you. That's just poetry to a different music. Yeah. You know, it's the way that we look at things. I, I'm big on people that make claims and say this and that. I go, where did, where did you learn that? You know, because you were taught that. Mm -hmm. The only things you know in life are what you've been taught or, or, or you looked up and learned. And that's your limitation. So how can you stand there and tell somebody else that they're wrong when they were taught something different from somewhere else or someone else? Right. Because you're both right. Yes. Right? From you're a different right. perspective. So acceptance, yeah. you know, is, is, it's not two plus two. Yeah, that's four. I get it. But I'm talking about life lessons of, of why they come up with the thought process they have that poetry's weak and we shouldn't talk about it. Why? Because our parents told us that. Society's told us that. You know, to be warriors and all the movies you watch with, you know, the 300 and yes. you know, this, you know, never die. And I'm a Viking and, you know, and, and I mean, we'll it's, it's become very much like, you know, the Star Trek, the uh, Klingons. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, the Klingon mentality. Whoa, 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 you know, die a right. hero, you know, and it's no, we want you back alive. Right. <laughs> As right. a mother, we didn't give birth to you to go and hero, 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 die. No, we want you back alive, being productive in your own life bring productive in society and so the same tenacity that you used out there bring it back you know mm -hmm. and uh, you know how many people have post-traumatic stress you know i had a, a rather negative marriage and that brought about some stress for me too and it's how do we cope with it it is learning new skills be willing to learn new skills and it's the same thing with yes. people with addiction or uh this is my last cigarette and i'll buy another pack or i'm not going to drink anymore uh, or i'm not going to be verbally abusive anymore it's all an addiction because that addiction is a pattern you know right yes right? Pattern. exactly so break the pattern exactly and we talk about that um when we used to argue and I would go down the same, you could go down my chalkboard list. <laughs> yep, there, yeah. now For us next. both. She's like, now you're going to do this. <laughs> no, I'm not. And I would do that. Yeah. You know, and then I, I, I was doing a lot of reading and I, it was about breaking the pattern. So I would start telling jokes in the middle of an argument and then she would get really mad at me thinking I was making fun of her until I finally told her, here's what I was trying to do. I'm trying to break the pattern. It's like, well, that's, it'd be good to share that yeah. that's what you're doing. Not in me. the moment of anger. <laughs> right. What you're doing here. Um, I was literally grabbing at anything to break my pattern. Right. To not do or say anything mean or horrible to her. And it just over time and persistence, um, you know, you keep at it and then you start, your, your new normal starts to emerge slowly. Right. And, and then don't just, you find now also the fact that you've started this foundation, you're giving people the skills and the tools, you know, to come back together, to, to open up to who each other are now. And then seeing those results, seeing people, even if people come together to realize they need to come apart, but they can do it friendly. Absolutely. It without, I'm honestly, I mean, it doesn't mean Absolutely. everybody's going to find themselves back into harmonious love, but mm -hmm. if you can find yourselves back into respect and like, but we're just too far different now, we need to let each other go, but we can do it with respect, you know? So whether it's together forever or whether it's, it's apart, but amenable, you know, it all about it's that communication. And I think one of the biggest problems couples have is communicating on a level where you are actually reaching each other and not speaking at yes. the person, speaking with them. Yeah. It was huge for us because we realized that we spoke different languages. Mm -hmm. We just didn't realize that I'll we talk spoke to the different guys. languages. I'll talk to the guys. She'll talk to the women. I'm like, you have to talk to your wife. Over-communicate. Tell her how you feel. I tell her, I'm not a cuss word about it. I, tell her, <laughs> I told her I F and do that. And I blah, blah, blah. And I go, okay, you're communicating. Let's talk about how you're communicating now. Step one's done. Let's talk about how, you know. And, and she'll do the same thing about receiving that message with the process mm. and communicating back. 
And I even, mean, if, you know, if, a, if a spouse is turning around to you and saying, oh, yes, I love you, you know, it's not quite the same. <laughs> it doesn't not. come from over. <laughs> and we all have our different ways that we love. And right. I think that was very eye-opening when I read the five love languages and, you know, we both took the little test and I realized for me, it was, um, words were so important and yes. touch was so important. Words of affirmation. And so when he was saying mean things, mm -hmm. I'm like, it's you don't touch. understand. That is my number one love language. That's also what hurts me the most. It's like a stab, isn't it? It, it absolutely yes. is. Yeah. And for him, it was acts of service. Yes. So when he was cleaning the house, that was showing love. Or when he was, you know, taking the kids here or there so that I could have, you know, a long shower and some quiet time, that was him showing love. And once we learned, okay, these are our different love languages, mm -hmm. you know, it's not, I'm not going to do acts of service as much for you, but realize That's that sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely the clean one. Um, <laughs> but understand that when I'm telling you, words you know and i write him cards all the time or letters and it comes from the heart it, that that's my way of telling him that i love him and just like i've realized oh okay he he wants to get these tasks done around the house let him that's his way of showing love and appreciation and respect yes yeah. and respect I mean, I'm a true colors coach, you know, the four different key personality traits. Mm. Yes. And, you know, I know that you go through it through the military because the military does that as a test for everyone, but I don't think they teach you how to use it. But once you actually understand which is your strong personality trait and where your others lie in there, you know, which ones are your weak ones. I'm just not going to be able to communicate very well on that level. And, you know, it's letting people know this is my strength. You know, these, these ones, I'm, I'm good at mediocre. This one is at the bottom. Please do not expect me to, you know, thrive in that language. And yes. I think there again, it's like, well, I'm not going to expect something from you that you're incapable of giving. So the more we understand ourselves, the more we can understand and communicate with each other on a level of comprehension. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. That's, That's, That's huge. One. And and really that whole awareness piece too. And, and like we had said, going back to the first wars, you know, I, I had recently learned that Christopher Robbins, um, you know, was a real boy and that um, the hundred acre woods was post-traumatic stress and that, mm. you know, Pooh was the narrator and, and walking this small child who I think he was seven, between seven and 10 years old when his father had come home and he couldn't explain post-traumatic stress. Right to a small boy. So mm -hmm. you've got Eeyore who's depression mm -hmm. and you've got uh, rabbit who is perfection driven aggression. And you've got Kanga and Rue who are the overprotection. So all of these characters he created to explain it. Yes. Because we do need that awareness. Yeah. We do need that communication of this is why I'm feeling this way. And this is part of it. And unfortunately the military does a great job with training, but not so much so um, awareness of the symptoms and what you're experiencing so that when depression sits in, that's, that's actually normal for what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we tackle that? They don't People. want you to tackle it when you're on the front, do they? You know, just right. get on no. with it, right? You know, last yes. thing they want you to do is in touch with your feelings. You know? <laughs> right. They definitely, they don't train you to die. They don't train you to feel weakness. Um, right. You know, you get shot with the simunition or the paint rounds or the plastic rounds. They hurt enough to let you know you got shot but you still run through it. And, mm -hmm. and like regular army will be like, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, lay down, you got shot in the arm. And it's like, I would go around screaming, get back up and shoot. You're never dead. You never die because if your brain thinks they get shot in the arm, I'm dead. As soon as we've got videos of, of people getting shot in the hand and they take a knee and go down, they run away versus, versus fighting for their life. Trained, mm -hmm. yeah. get shot in the hand. They didn't even know they've been shot in the hand. They don't care. They're not dead because they'll never die until that moment they get one right through the head and then they don't know they're dead. Right. You know, but you can never tell one of the people I work with, you know, that you're going to die. I, right. You know, Somalia, I, I relented that I was going to die, but I didn't care. I kept fighting on because that's what, you know, I knew it was coming. So who cares? That's what you were trained to do. Yeah. Right. And you, you never trained to die. You never trained to feel weak. So right. that's the hard thing to break when you get out is to show those emotions. And, and to understand that it's not weakness. Right. To be vulnerable right. is not weakness. There's another right. lovely movie, Inside Out. 
Have you seen that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, I love and that. The beautiful thing about Inside Out, and I was interviewing a lot of psychiatrists at the time, and they go, oh, this movie is wonderful. Thanks for recommending it. They use it in their workshops now. And the thing about Inside Out is to show is that all of our emotions that we go through are an indication of how we feel. Now, it's tap into your emotions, but don't become emotional about them. Mm, Understand right. why is that emotion there? Why are you angry right now? Right? What's right. triggering that anger? Don't blame the anger. It's just, you know, a little sign. And find out what it is in anger. Is it a, is it a past memory? Or is it something that somebody hasn't done? And can you get over it? Or should you address it? But deal with it, but don't get stuck in it. Right. And that's one that's, of the problems. We get stuck in emotions, don't we? That was such oh, key. Sure. I read that recently as well. Not, not being emotional about the emotions. Just yes. let the emotions flow. You, yes. Why mess They're with there. them? And don't get emotional about that. Yeah. Then you end up arguing about why you're arguing and then you, or how you're arguing anyway. Or well, having to, to be right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Which when, you know, one of the, my favorite sayings is when, you know, our therapist had told us, she said, when one of you are trying to win, the relationship loses. Yes. You guys have to be on the same team and you fight the problem, not each other. Right. And, yes. you know, you need to be on the team and you attack the depression or the anger or, you know, whatever symptom may be together and you look for the solution together, not against each other because you're in you it know. together. So stop yes. fighting your best resource. You're, you know, you're, right. You're, you're, your right hand man or woman, you know, that's the thing. Yes. Would, you, would you turn on your right hand man and the battlefront? Never. It brings a good right. Point so you me. can't do that in the marriage either. Well, right? We get asked the questions all the time, like, "Why am I so angry at my spouse?" I, I should start saying, "I don't know. Why are you?" Tell me why you're so angry with your spouse, because there's no way I'll know. Right. And let them work through that issue themselves. Well, she she's so nice to me. Okay, she asks me questions. She cares about me, but she drives me crazy with what? What? Caring about you? Mm -hmm. Trying to find out why you're acting like this. So it's a good way to make people work through their own. Reflection. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's that mirror back, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what type of things do you do on these retreats with couples? So we really do a lot what we've just talked about. We're mm -hmm. creating awareness around the tools um, that can be used. Um, it's a four-day process. We have a licensed uh, clinical social worker who's just phenomenal, and she's a marriage and trauma expert. Um, her name's Stacy Stone. So she comes in with Tom and I. And she really is creating the awareness of connection and disconnection, mm -hmm. safety and security. So that is so much what has um, unraveled in, this, in the couples that we see. Um, it certainly was in our own experience is that disconnection mm -hmm. through the trauma, finding your way back together, um, realizing those triggers, finding the tools, even the words that you use, the um, system that might come into place. Take Here's a five-minute breathing break. This is how you do this. Because what works for Tom and I might not work for the next couple. So we provide right. all kinds of tools, all kinds of research based on emotionally focused therapy. And it's really just, like you said, nobody's going to save their marriage in a weekend. Right. But we're creating awareness. These are the issues that you guys need to address. These are the things that are happening in the home. Here's the way that you could go about getting the therapies or helps or the modalities of treatment that could help you reconnect and rebuild and find that safety and security in yourself and in each other. So one thing, and over that four day period, you know, there's nice dinners, nice meals. They get a date night. Um, everything is purpose driven. Everything has a task while you're doing it, but it's done in a fun environment, whether it's, golf cart tour of some beautiful caves and countryside um, during that drive you know one person drives in the golf cart and the other one rides and they get to read down the list of the five top words they want to say and the five top words they want to hear and then when they switch they have to do the same thing mm -hmm. you're not allowed to talk back and it's that opened up a lot of um, minds for a lot of the people like wow I didn't know those things I didn't know we were saying the same things mm -hmm. and, and how that we're speaking this different languages but saying the same thing yeah. So everything's sprinkled with fun, openness, fresh air, relaxation, but you're learning something the entire time. You're, you're and teaching apply, them and a new applying survival it. kit. Right. And you're, but you're teaching them a new survival kit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yes. That's Absolutely. the whole thing. So you just, whatever you had in your survival kit before on the battlefront, you know, you don't want to look at your home front as a battlefront. So it's just a different survival kit. 
that will help you reconnect and reunite. And as you said, it may end up being that it's actually wonderful reconnection and a beautiful, strong marriage because you will need to go through it together. Or it might be a realization that this isn't going to work. But instead of where it would have been the battle and the animosity, you can leave one another with respect and camaraderie, especially if there are children involved. And that's okay too. But it's about the comprehension of each other and the respect of listening to one another and how we feel and addressing that feeling and, uh, and that reconnection of respect and love starts with caring, starts with kindness, you know, communication. Yeah, yeah. Love is not the first thing that's going to be rekindled, is it? Right. No. <laughs> no. no. The one thing we don't do there is have war stories told. Good. Every time mm -hmm. veterans tell war stories, they get to one up each other and my war story is better yep. and, or my war story is not like yours. So I must not need to be here. We don't tell, talk about the stories because that doesn't matter. We talk about it's the past. Why, why we're it's here. It's not your present. How, yeah. Yeah, right. how, how do you feel now and how are you going to work on that to feel better in the future? So. Yeah, exactly. I think what you're doing is a wonderful job. And, you know, you're, you're based obviously in the U.S. And um, I believe that people have to pay to get themselves there, but they don't have to pay for the for the weekend themselves you got it correct Absolutely. excellent so i mean you know all it is wherever you are you could either drive there or fly there and you know in the u.s it's all cheap you know, compared to if you're coming from somewhere else and the i think because the the biggest um investment that they have to do here is the willingness to give time to the yeah. process right to participate yes. Right. And if you're not going to come to give the time and be the willing to participate, you're not going to get anything out of it. So do you do a, a, um, a filter of who's coming to see if they're ready for it first? We do. And that's all done through the therapist, Stacey Stone. So mm -hmm. she has a questionnaire. Um, it's a pretty simple one, but it kind of gets to the heart of where you're at in your relationship. Um, she even has a simple question of why did you decide to come? Mm -hmm. She said, I can learn so much about that one answer my wife told me to come no, right. and i said Those so what do you i said well <laughs> what do you do with that and she said i love that answer i think that shows loving mm -hmm. caring because it's saying i'm willing to show up for somebody else that i care about and i thought oh well that wasn't See, the answer i thought I would come <laughs> up with. like oh you're only here because of your wife huh and she's like that's great yeah. i'm glad that oh, you're here for your you wife love her enough to show up for her that's awesome that's though. the point isn't it like, I'm oh, wow. here. my wife's dragged me along i guess i'll try but at least you got through the door <laughs> yes. you're giving it a try right yes yeah, I mean, and you don't try on the battlefront, do you? You do. Do. As, do. You, as, you know, as Nike says, just do it, or Yoda, just do. You know, you're yes. in the moment. You just do. So why can't you take that same presence mm -hmm. and put it into that time together? Yeah. We had a, a lot of reluctant warriors show up, um, and every single one of them left with a very sincere um, relief. Just this, oh, okay, well, I didn't know she felt that way. We had we've had people that have scratched open some very deep wounds and some, you know, some things where maybe we have different breaks where we go off and we do exercises. What Maybe our therapist needs to come in and work with that couple a little bit more intensely. And we've actually had a couple break up after the retreat right. because they did realize, yeah. I love you, you love me, but we are going in completely... Yeah opposite we'll just, directions we'll learn how to work Let's, together for the kids. yes I, but that's the point that's great. you know um you know um, i have a friend who jokes me uh, you know i'm the breakup queen and i said no i'm 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 really more the clarity the coach mm -hmm. is that yeah. if you are really two totally different people now and you are not on the same path and you can't find that way to merge together there's you and you and us right, right? if the us doesn't work respect the you and you and you can still be a part of each other's life in that respect and let each other go because you love them enough to let them go and seek a different life, right? Not, it's, it's not all about, oh, I must stay together because. Right. I went down that road. I stayed together because of the kids. And it was my kids that turned around and said divorce. <laughs> <laughs> i've heard that before too yeah. <laughs> it's time mum. <laughs> you know? right and you know you think you're doing the right thing for the kids yes. but i can tell you if you're living in animosity and, and strain it's the worst thing for the kids so sometimes Agreed. maybe you do need to break up and find a different yeah. relationship as co-parenting uh, or maybe you can find the way back but the whole point is until you explore 
and try, you're not going to find any medium. You're going to go down the hate and bitter and twisted road. And we don't want anyone to do that. Right. Agreed. Agreed. And, and really what we hope comes out of it is that that language is developed, that communication yeah. that is so critical to find out, you know, where you're at, where I'm at, where we want to go. Is there an us? And, and so much of the tools that Stacy brings out creates that dialogue. And yeah. sometimes it's very painful to see. Um, yes. and, and old hurt and even childhood hurt yes. that comes up. Um, old trauma from spouses who, you know, everyone's looking at the warrior saying, oh, you've got this, this, and this. A lot, I'm not going to say most, but a lot of the spouses come from trauma as well. Yeah. Um, and that hasn't been resolved or dealt with. So they're bringing their stuff into the relationship, but going, you, you, you. And he's going, wait a minute, this can't all be me. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, it's awareness on both parts. Of- I mean, you know, it is, it is statistically, you know, kind of proven that a, a lot of women marry their fathers. Right. And, you know, and, you know, you know, I, I married somebody of totally different ethnicity in a different country, different everything, but I ended up marrying the same temperament as my father. And mm-hmm. I loved my father. He died at 45 because he was one of one of the second world war suck it up. Yeah. Chin better up. And, and uh, there were four left in his squadron and they all literally were dropping like flies. And he was the last one. And he was dead at 45 because wow. never allowed to deal with it. Right. Wow. You know, drank too fast. He had a heart attack at 40. Um, he could have changed his lifestyle and lived instead. Just come on, Def, come and get me. Right. right. Yeah. And so, you know, th- there was no recourse for them then. And, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, we let the veterans down now that come home. And I take my hat off. And this is the reason I do these shows when veterans are there for veterans, because right. you understand, you know what's needed. Uh, the government is too far behind and too busy mudslinging at each other or gouging <laughs> or whatever else is going on. They're not paying attention. They'll gladly send you off to war, but when you come back needing help, they don't want to know. So right. the fact that you guys step up yourselves to serve the veterans, to serve the people you know, what they're going through, I commend you both on that. So thank you very much for being there for them because you guys know best of all what they're going through. Thank I can't you. think of anything I'd rather be doing now. Um, right. As terrifying right. as it was to step into, <laughs> I can't think of anything else I'd rather do. Right you now. see, you went through the process and you found your beautiful instrument and now you've created this wonderful orchestra. Yay! Yay. It's going to resonate <laughs> out there to people and be invitational. If you're willing to go through the process of life and go through the pain and come out the other side, then you actually really understand what life is all about, don't you? Yeah, for yeah. sure. And so what have the courage. Mm-hmm. Yes. To take yeah. the risk. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. The sh- and, and discover your strength. I didn't know I was this strong. Right. I didn't know I was this capable. I didn't know I could learn this. Right. And until you're willing to try, you don't know. And that's the thing. Very Be true. willing to try. Right. Invest in yourself. Invest in each other. How do people sign up for this? I know you take only so many couples a year, but how do they, what is the process that they have to go through? Well, one thing that's really exciting is we're expanding to online courses Wonderful. so that anyone can take the course anywhere around the world. Um, we're looking to launch that this summer. Um, so we're in the process of creating that. And that will be on our website, allsecurefoundation.org. Um, right now, we are rebuilding our entire website. We're getting a more robust system as we're growing. Um, our retreats are fully um, they're, they're booked fully through 2020. We filled them literally in one day. Wow. Um, so there's well, that's, definitely that's a good age. sign that it's needed. That's yes. for sure. good, good and sad. Yeah. Yes. So now yeah. we're actually doing a lot of fundraising efforts um, because again, these, these retreats are free, mm-hmm. um, excluding travel. So all that information is online at allsecurefoundation.org. As we keep adding more retreats, you just apply online for that. Excellent. And of course, you know, um, they can inquire about the program coming up and maybe even, yes, you know, uh, absolutely. You know, just be part of it. And, you know, you don't have to wait, you know, for, for 2021 to be part of the tree. You've got this online coming up and I'm sure that you've got other resources and skills and tools absolutely. on the site right now that people can step up to. And, you know, just listening to your story, Tom, before where you talked about, you know, your whole process of literally joining the army and then everything that you went through and, and everything that manifested from it and now where you're at, right? And um, Jen, we're going to do uh, the story about your other um, organization that you have. Would you give us a little teaser on that? 
Sure, I'd love to. So Virago is a platform that I had developed um, mainly talking for the need from the spouses, from the women who felt so incredibly isolated. PTS, when you're dealing with um, someone with PTS, secondary PTS is a real issue Mm -hmm. um, and a real problem. And and what we're not talking about are the spouse suicides and the children's suicides. Um, The Pentagon finally is acknowledging that we have an issue with the families on the home front. Mm -hmm. And so obviously I have a, a pretty big passion about helping women find the ways for not only them to help their spouse, but to help themselves mm. to be able to develop the tools they need, you know, the support that they need, the encouragement they need to press on. And so Excellent. And we're going to be doing that. a show around that. And, you know, it goes back to the you, you and us, you know, right. you need to heal yourself. You need to heal yourself. And then you need to cover come together you know as healed as you possibly can in rebuilding us and that's what it's about you can't both come as broken shattered pieces and expect to you know be able to put each other back together so there's the individual work that needs to be done so that you can come together for the us right absolutely (laughs) we definitely do it individually and we do therapy together as well knowing the fact that it's different when you mix two ingredients yes it always always changes something yes Exactly. And again, if there is no quick fix, there's no downloadable app, there's not a pill or a, a drink or a drug that you can take that's going to help you through this. This is part of being a human being is going through life processes. And some people have been dealt a much harder hand than others. But they're generally the ones who really go through the process and come out the other side who do extraordinary things for humanity they discover what their purpose and and the meaning of life is and they become wonderful contributors because we're all here to be a contributor in this wonderful goal you know global community so thank you both so much for sharing um for anybody who's um here on the mentors don't forget to go back and listen to tom's show jen show is coming up very shortly and uh support them because what the the work that they're doing is so very very important and even if you just go to the site and say, I'm not a veteran, but what can I learn from this? If they're, if they're not, not a veteran, they can do the online course anyway, right? Yep, absolutely. absolutely yeah. We right. welcome any it, and it's, everyone. It's, it's designed for humans. Exactly. Right. Wonderful. <laughs> and I say that because an awful lot of people are going through life like a you know humanoid, you know. Right. <laughs> and so we do that. We kind of go into a droid state of being, of automation of all patterning because we don't want to deal with a new system right. or we don't know how to, we don't have the tools to do so. So when those skills and tools are there, it helps us step out of the humanoid and step back into beauty, being a beautiful human being and uh, being as awesome as we're meant to be. So fantastic. Love so it. it's all securefoundation.org and uh, they can find everything there, all your social media and they can contact you and they can sign up and they can do everything right there. You've got it. Excellent. Absolutely. Again, if you're not a veteran, I don't care. Maybe you just would like to fund them and support them. They'll have that uh, funding uh, platform there as well. As I've said, I interview the veterans that are out there serving the veterans and serving the community and being an inspiration to all of us. So let us, in our gratitude for their new service uh, to their country and to the people, support them in any way. If you can't fund them, share them. Share these stories, get people talking about them, share the awareness, because the more we talk about it, the more we diffuse it and bring light to it, and the more we can find the solutions to it. So thank you very much, Jen and Tom. Thank you thank so you much. It was a pleasure. I really, really appreciate it. Until next time, folks. Bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. To find many more shows of inspiration, please go to selfdiscoverymedia.com podcasts and you will see an array of shows to choose from. Please do visit our www.discoveringcommunities.org and see what else that we have in store for you. Do enjoy our next show.